Jeremiah chapter 7, and we'll leave off where we were last time, verse 16. Therefore pray not for this people, neither lift up a cry nor prayer for them. Neither make mere intercession for me, to me, for I will not hear thee. And we talked about last time, God said don't pray for him. And we had to break because of time, but let's read on the verse. What would God say about not praying? Seest thou what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? Okay, what are they doing? That's interesting. What are they doing that God says, don't pray for them, don't make intercession for them, and if you do, I'm not going to listen. The three. The children gather wood. All right. And the fathers kindle the fire with the wood. And the women, there's a family thing. There's a family Wood, fire, the women need the dough. It's a family worship. We're going to see in a moment. Need the dough to make cakes. To the queen of heaven. There you go. There it is. There it is. There's the queen of heaven. Almost 600 years before even Mary, the Roman Catholic Queen of Heaven, is born. Because the Roman Catholic Church, I come out of the Roman Catholic Church, Mary is the Queen of Heaven, and you see the Queen of Heaven in Jeremiah about 600 B.C. You got a problem. The Queen of Heaven was the moon. And you would see Mary represented with the moon. Islam is associated with the moon, the crescent moon. And stealing from the nation of Israel out of Revelation 12, the woman being the moon and the 12 stars. Where in the church I was in, oh, I can't be Mary. Oh, and you're in trouble. Because, it, I mean, it can't be Israel, excuse me. Then you're in trouble. Because if you're not going to do what the Bible says, that that's Israel... By the dream of Joseph, telling the dream to his father and to his brethren, the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars. Revelation says twelve, counting Joseph. Then if you're going to say that's not Israel, then who else are you going to say? Well, let's study more. I don't know if we're going to finish this chapter tonight. The same is Astarte. We'll get into or Asteria. Asteria would be the Bible, the Hebrew. The prophet describes the whole family. You can read this if you got the video. They're preparing for sacrifices and superstitious rites of an idol. And we see cake. The Queen of Heaven. And this comes out of doctors of theology, doctors of history, and it's been ignored by the church, but you're the fool. The Queen of Heaven, Esther, 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 I-S-H-T-R. Her name today in the Baptist Catholic Churches is Easter. Oh, the Catholic Church is wrong. We don't have nothing in the Catholic Church. They got the Queen of Heaven. And you have E star, S star. And I've seen a church today, you know, bring your eggs for E star service. Ishtar, Easter, is a queen of heaven. <clears throat> she goes by multiple names. Has been identified with the Phoenician. That's where we get our alphabet. Goddess Estarte. The Semitic, the Semitic goddess Asherah, that's the Bible, Old Testament. The goddess of Isis, I-S-I-S, -S, of Egypt. 
the goddess of Greece in the Greek, Aphrodite. The goddess Venus of Rome. These goddesses in different nations are actually the same Babylonian goddess, Eshtar. But they just been given different names in their different nations. We got the Bible and the Hebrew and the, and the Greek. And we got the English language, but let's go back to the Greek. No, we got it in English. They're all called the Virgin. They're all called the Queen of Heaven. Again, that Sharia is talked about in the Bible. She's a mother figure. And she's seen in her idols, her images, and her uh, 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 statue of carrying Baal. Baal is the big sun god. Asterisk is known as the goddess of lust. Interesting. Her, her names are Inanna. And if you go to my study of Esther and Esther, you'll find Inanna. Anak. Isis. Nut. Astarte. Venus. Diana. You see her in the New Testament. Jupiter. Ishtar. Semiramis. That goes all the way back to uh, uh, Tammuz. Well, look at the Babylonian, look at the Egyptian, look at the Roman, look at the Greek, look at the false god. All of them are the same goddess. And they fall under the Roman Catholic Church called Mary. Now, there's a different, there's two Mary. There's the Roman Catholic Virgin Mary, and then there's the biblical Virgin Mary, which did not remain a virgin. Her and Joseph had other children. But here's the Queen of Heaven. And people hate, uh, oh, he saved Baptist Catholic. Do you celebrate Easter? And if you do, you are celebrating let me find it. The Babylonian goddess Esther. The queen of heaven of Babylon. And I had a preacher in my house that, oh, uh, you know, the Egyptian and, and the Babylonian goddess, and, you know, you read it too much, and they, yeah, okay, there we go. For somebody who keeps Easter. Need their dough to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven. And to pour out drink offerings. Now what's that? That's the Eucharist. Because the Eucharist is not Bible. The Eucharist, they hold up a wafer, a cake. And in America, those cakes are made by nuns in California. At least they used to be made by nuns in California. Women making cakes. And the foundation and the, and, the, and the source of the worship of the Catholic Church is not Jesus. Jesus is not the mediator. Mary is. Mary is the God. Mary is the Queen of Heaven. And if Jesus is the child of Mary, and God is the Father, then Jesus is a prince under the King and Queen of Heaven, so Jesus is under Mary. So they're making cakes to her, those little wafers. The IHS on them. Little sun disc to give to Baal, the sun god. What's the drink offering? The hooch. They have their wafers and they have their, 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 their beverage for their Eucharist, which they say is the body and blood of Jesus Christ. They will tell you that. If they don't, they're lying to you. But in all actuality, reality, it's given to Mary. It's false worship. And they're doing it 500 years B.C. before Mary was even born, before Jesus was ever born, before, I mean, uh, uh, what? 
600 years, seven, 800 years even before the Catholic Church even coined the name Catholic. And that in your Baptist Catholic churches, you have a queen of heaven if you worship Easter. Well, we, we, I don't care. Well, uh, 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 if you celebrate Easter, you are celebrating the the, the the Babylonian goddess, the queen of heaven. That's just plain and simple. I mean, if you were to see me on the street and I got a red and white beer can that has, I can't remember the name, Budweiser. She remember the name. If I'm drinking from a red and white can called Budweiser beer, now I don't care if I tell you if it's coconut juice or chocolate drink or uh, 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 grape juice. I don't care what I tell you. If I'm drinking a red and white can that said Budweiser, I am drinking beer. Not that I would. It's plain and simple. If I take a little arsenic and put it in a glass of water and drink it, I'm drinking poison. And eventually the more and more I drink and the more and more I drink of the arsenic and how daily and how weekly I do it, I'm going to poison myself. And the, and the, and the Baptist Catholic churches have poisoned themselves a little leaven, leaven, the whole lump that the, that the, the Queen of Heaven's in many Baptist churches today. Not all. So there she is. That's the one that God said don't pray for. Are we not to pray for our Catholic family? We're to pray for our Catholic family, but look what it does. It angers God. That after you witness your Catholic families and they don't get right, they don't do right, and they adhere to the to the, the, the traditions of the church, they may get to the point. What did God say? Images and idols that the, of the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. That the fact is that the Catholic religion may provoke God to so much jealousy, and He, he may tell you about your. Don't even pray for them. They keep on going about the worship of Mary, the Queen of Heaven, the Catholic Mary, and all the other names I give you, and Anna, and, and Esther, and Isis, and all that. If you go so far that you will not turn to God, but keep your Queen of Heaven, God said, to make it to the point, God said, I don't want to hear it, I don't want to listen. Now, let's take the Baptist Church. What if to the point you give them, you tell them, say, listen, Easter's wrong, this is, this is all the facts, this is the video. Somebody takes this video and says, hey, Pastor, you know, we got Easter in our church. I want you to hear this gentleman. Man, he's talking. He's giving facts. He's got documented things. And on his website, he's got other things about us. It's wrong. And the pastor listens. And the pastor, whatever church and all that, and says, you know what? Well, we're going to keep it. I don't think that guy's correct. But, you know, we have, well, we just want to keep it. And I know it's true. But, you know, it makes whatever excuses. And holds on to the Queen of Heaven. Well, if God will do it for the Catholic Church, won't you think that God will do it for the Baptist Church? Hey, don't even pray for me. I ain't listening. And then when you partake of the Lord's Supper, however you do it in the church with the Queen of Heaven, you've read about the, you know, the death, the sickness, the troubles. Onto other gods. Listen, they got the Queen of Heaven and other gods. Do you realize the Roman Catholic Church has a saint day for 365 days of the year? Every day there's a saint to be honored. And you can find them online. And there are names that are not even found in the Bible. That they may provoke me to anger. The worship of the Queen of Heaven, whatever her name is, whatever the style that you do, whether it be the Roman Catholic Mary or it be the Babylonian Istar, whatever day and age you are in, angers God.
Do they not provoke me to anger, saith Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? That's all confusion. There's no queen of heaven. There is no mother of God, and even Mary of the Bible, she's not the mother of God. Though Jesus is God, she's not the mother of God. She's only a chosen vessel of God, not the mother of God. And Jesus made sure he's, because every time he dressed Mary, woman, woman. Therefore thus saith the Lord, behold, my anger, my fury shall be poured upon this place, upon man, upon beast, upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground. It shall burn, it shall not be quenched. You can imagine a Baptist church taking part in this mess that God says, I am angry, I am furious. Imagine the popes when they stand before God one day. Imagine the priests standing before God one day. Listen, I grew up in New London, Connecticut. The Catholic church that I was in was St. Mary's Star by the Sea. And once a year there was a celebration and they would carry the statue of Mary down the street, Huntington Avenue, and they would pin money to her. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, put your burnt offering into your sacrifices and eat flesh. For I spake not unto your fathers, and commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. But this thing commanded I, you see, when they came out of Egypt, God didn't tell them about the burnt offerings or anything like that. That came afterwards. When they came out of Egypt, God says, Obey my words. Follow me. Escape Egypt. Escape the gods of Egypt. And I read to you, the queen of heaven, you find her, Isis. That's from Egypt. Obey my voice. That's what God told them to do when they came out of Egypt. And I will be your God. And ye shall be my people. Walking all the ways that I commanded you. That you may be well unto you. That's what God told them to do when they came out of Egypt. The sacrifices and all that came later. The first thing that God told those, those, those Israelites coming out of Egypt. Obey me. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and in imaginations of their evil heart, and went backward and not forth. Backsliding. Queen of heaven worship is backsliding. It's rebellion. It has never been ordered by God, and I'm talking about Easter too in the Baptist churches. You are an abomination, and you are in great confusion. Ain't nothing Christian. There ain't nothing Christ-like. There ain't nothing Jesus in Esther, Easter. Even the Bible, the one place Easter is mentioned, that's mentioned as the Roman holiday. And then a couple verses, you have the Passover, the Jewish holiday. And yet the Baptist Catholic Church has put them both together. It's Resurrection Sunday, and when you take the Passover, and you add three days and three nights... Did it fall over on Resurrection Sunday? If it didn't, you're lying to your congregation. You now have a Baptist Catholic Good Friday, whatever day it fell on. You're doing the same thing as the Baptist Catholics. They did that this year. Resurrection Sunday. Well, I forget what it was, but from the Passover, three days and three nights, I think it was Tuesday this year. Or Wednesday. Three days and three nights after the Jewish Passover was a Tuesday or Wednesday and churches were celebrating Resurrection Sunday on Sunday. That's a Catholic Baptist Good Friday. Get three days and three nights from Friday to Sunday, you can. Get three days and three nights from this year's Passover 
to Resurrection Sunday, you can. And you're just trying to give Easter another name. You're trying to give it another name, such as Anana, Ahat, Isis, Nut, Astarte, Venus, Diana, Istar, Seminandis, Easter, and Mary. You're doing the same thing the Roman Catholics do. That's why I call it a Baptist Catholic Church. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, right now, he's writing, I have even sent unto you all my servants and prophets. Jeremiah, one of them. Isaiah, one of them. Elijah, Elijah. In the time of um, Jezebel, there was a man that, held, that, that hid a hundred prophets, fifty in, in two caves. Israel and Judah had a witness. Yet they hearkened not unto me, nor inclined their ear. Now look what God said. I sent prophets, I sent people, and they did not hearken unto me inspiration. Those prophets that I said, they spanked by me. Not that you didn't listen to the prophets. Yet they spoke what I told you. Jeremiah speak what I'm telling you. But you didn't listen to me. And when Jesus talks to Paul on the road to Damascus, why persecutest thou me? And I have been involved with a couple churches where I tried to teach right. Uh, and there was a church a while back, there was a family involved in magic. And I tried to help that family out. I tried to say, you know, your magic is wrong. It's not Bible. And the pastor's response was, we'll, get, we'll let him come up to the pulpit and let us do a magic show for us. God has sent prophets, God has sent preachers, God has sent evangelists to edify, to rebuke, in season, out of season. You expect me to listen to you as a pastor of a church when you won't listen to the Bible? You expect your congregation to respect you as a man of God, as a man of the Bible, and you won't adhere to the Bible? I'm glad I won't be in your bare feet at the Either I don't know what judgment you're going to, because I got to be careful because there are men and women in pulpits, and according to Second Corinthians chapter eleven, you may be of the devil. And if you're of the devil, you ain't going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. And if you are saved and you have defiled the people and you have turned away from God, you expect everybody in your church to listen to you for correction, and God sends somebody help you and correct you and you won't listen to them my definition is a hypocrite verse 27 therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them but they will not hearken <laughs> now isn't that it's an interesting message Jeremiah Let's look at it for a moment. Let's look at it. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words. You got that? Whatever I tell you to speak, speak it. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Elijah, Elijah, Noah. Noah preached. It's like me. The Bible says, go in all the world and preach to God. I go down to, to the city of Daytona Beach and I preach the gospel. God said, preach the gospel. Preach. That's, that sounds good, doesn't it? Watch. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken unto thee. <laughs> Jeremiah? Yes, Lord. I want you to speak all my words. Yes, sir, Lord. But they're not going to listen. So one of the things that people come up to me as a street preacher, and, you know, we talk about things I know. 
Where's your group of people? How many people got saved? And all I can say is broad is the way that leads to destruction. Do you expect a lot of people to get saved? Nope. Broad is the way that leads to destruction and many go thereat. Many people, even with the preaching of the gospel, are going to go to hell. Now straight is the gate that leads to life and the few. There will be a few. Not the masses. Not the many. And when you got these churches today, oh, you know, we got three people saved, we got four people saved, we got five people saved. That's not Bible. Well, you know, in the book of Acts, they got a thousand people saved. Yeah, because it, everything was fresh, everything was new. It was on the minds and hearts of the people that this Jesus just died. It was current events. And when for 40 days, dead people walked around Jerusalem. I think that made news. Now, the only way dead people are walking today is the Baptist church. They're dead. Though they say they're alive, they are zombies that God says, you're wretched, miserable, poor, and all that. But we're great. We're wonderful. How great we are. How great our pastor is. How great our church is. You're dead. You're dead. And you're not listening. And there have been Christian in churches I've been in. And there have been pastors in, in churches I've been in. And I tried to help them. I tried to show them the error of their way. Oh, you're not going to tell me. I had one one pastor one time. I sat on the other side of his desk. He'll touch not my anointed. Do my pro later. I learned that's Jewish. You're stealing from Israel. You're in trouble. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. God has told us he's called Israel. <laughs> Jeremiah, yeah. You are going to, your love for the people, like Paul's love for the Jew, you're going to call out and reach out from your heart, not only from me. And they're not going to answer you. They're not going to call upon you. They're not going to answer. You're going to pour your heart out, Jeremiah. Paul, you're going to pour... Listen, Paul went to prison. The Holy Spirit told Paul at least three times, don't go to Jerusalem. I'm going. And he didn't do it out of rebellion to the fact that he rebelled. He went there because he loved the Jews. And it was a Jewish feast. And I can reach the Jews. Even in good rebellion, you're still rebelling against God. But they shall say unto them, but thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, Israel, Judah. This is the church period that will not obey the, the voice of Jesus Christ, their Savior. They want itchy ears. Remember what Paul said to Timothy? nor receive correction. And I can speak in that one with churches. I know that for a fact. I have Christians tell me they're going to keep their holidays no matter what. They don't want to hear it. Okay? Truth is perished. It is cut off from their mouth. Not their mind. They're my, they can't speak the truth. So what's the Christian have today? The media and the government. Liars. And you have false preachers in the pulpits today lying to their people. It happens. And it, the hardest thing, the worst thing I, I have come across for somebody today 
I've learned in my lifetime. The worst person is not only the liar. It's the person that not only lies, but he himself believes the lies he is telling. Or, not only the person is lying, but he doesn't care about the lies he's lying so he can, whatever his agenda is. But the, 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 the foundation is a liar. A liar. For even the children of Judah have done evil in my sight. So the church age. Save the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house. <laughs> Don't they call it the church house? And in the church house there are abominations. I guarantee there are Baptist churches now in this month they got the, rain, the, the, the rainbow symbols of the Sodomites. Do you know that Ark Encounter in, in, in Tennessee put a rainbow thing around the entrance to their ark. Well, you know, could God put a ball? No, no, you don't need to do that right now. You can wait till after the, the, the Sodomite festival. The fact is, you did it during the, so the Sodomite festivals of this month. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. They have set their, uh, their abominations in the house, which is called by my name, the polluted. In the temple of the Lord, in the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem, is the false worship. In the temple of Jerusalem is the false worship. So in the Baptist churches there can be false worship. I skip 29. Cut off thy hair, O Jerusalem, and cast it away. And take up a lamentation on the high place. That's where all the false worship is. For the Lord has rejected and forsaken this, forsaken the generation of his wrath. For the children of Judah done evil in the sight, saith the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house. To his house, which is called by my name, to pollute it. And Jesus said in, in chapter 7, verse 11, In this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes. You know in Baptist churches, those offerings always don't go to where you think they're going. You may not even know where those offerings are going. You know how I know the Lord's going to close the door of a church I've been visit, churches I visit? It's when I, I start looking at where the offerings go and I say, Lord, I can't give it to that church. I can't give my offering. I will give it to missionaries, but I am not giving it to that church because of the nonsense they're doing with the money. And then within time after that, that door closes for that church. And it'd be nothing worse for a church to say, yes, it's going here, and it doesn't go there. That's fraud. A lot of people give money to these charities, and these charities don't go to where they say they're going. It goes for the CEOs. It goes for what they don't tell you. That's fraud. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, saith the Lord. They have set their abomination in the house. There are abominations in the church houses of the Baptist churches today. And called by my name to pollute it. To pl noise pollution, air pollution. What about pollution among the assembly of believers that all are welcome? 
And since the unsaved are welcome to church, we'll give the unsaved a little worldly entertainment. We'll give the a little worldly fellowship. A little worldly gifts and something. In the house of God. Father's Day is coming up. And how many fathers are going to go to a church and get a gift from the church? And that father ain't worthy of anything to be. That guy's a rascal when it comes to be a father. And then again, the Bible says, call no man your father. We like to welcome all those on Father's Day. Isn't that what the Catholics call it? Baptist Catholic. That's in Matthew. I mean, churches like run into Matthew, don't they? Call no man your father. Well, what about you? Well, I used to call him, before he died, I used to call my father, Dad. I never called my, my dad father. Uh-huh. And they have built the high places false worship, of Tophet. Now, Tophet is an interesting name. I don't, know if, I don't know if you know what Tophet means, but Tophet means drum. Dun, 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 dun. You know, little drummer boy? The little drummer boy at Tamu's Mass? You know why they call it drum? Because the places of Tophet in the valley of the son of Hen is the worship of Molech. What's Molech? Molech is post-abortion. See, abortion is when a woman's pregnant and she goes into a place and they remove the fetus from her belly, from her womb. That's abortion. In the valley of Molech, the drums, is they will beat the drums very loud as they take infants and young children and put them into the mechanical arms of a statue named Molech. And in his belly would, would a door open up and there would be molten fire furnace in that belly. And the gears and levers will take that baby in that arm and chuck it into the belly of Molech. And you would play the drums to beat out screaming children. It's almost done like that in India. You see, in India, they got this elephant god that, that rolls down the street. And the mothers take their children and they throw their children under the rollers of that big elephant. Nothing new under the sun. And the Baptist churches today take their children and they throw them to the world. My son went to Christian camp one year. He came back and said, Dad, ain't nothing but, that ain't, that ain't Christian at all. Don't send me again. You know, the Catholic Church, the man they call father and the woman they called nun, sister, and since the priests couldn't marry and the nuns couldn't marry, you know, they would have relations together. And then the freak of nature, sometimes that nun would conceive a child. And the early Catholic Church would be kill the baby, kill the child. There you go. This is not abortion. This is after the child's born. And drums were played so you couldn't hear the children screaming. This is in reference to the Queen of Heaven, the same chapter. Molech has the title of other religions as Baal. You know who the Queen of Heaven is? She's the wife goddess. You know what Baal and Molech is? He's the husband god. 
the sun and the moon get together and they make little babies. Stars. And since we don't want those stars, let them be a comet into the Star light, star bright. Watch what church you go to tonight. You may not be in a church. You may be in the mess we're reading in Jeremiah 7. You need to get out. To burn their sons and daughters in the fire. There it is. Which I command not. Neither came into my heart. God never designed any of his creation to kill their children. Never. Abortion and murdering children, God never thought. Don't you ever, don't you ever blame that on God. That's not God. That's the devil and that's man. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that shall be no more called Tophet. Drums, nor the valley of the son of Hanan, but the valley of slaughter. They shall bury in Tophet till there be no place. It'll be a big graveyard. It's a big graveyard now with all the dead babies and children. Their carcasses of this people shall be meat for the fowls of the heaven. They're not going to be buried. And the beasts of the earth. And none shall pray them all away. Listen, those babies were burned to crisp. They were cream Praetorian. But the people, the dead bodies are going to lay out on the ground and the animals are going to eat them. Then will I cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of mirth, gladness, the voice of gladness, joy, the voice of a bridegroom, marriage, the voice of a bride, she's happy, it's wonderful, it's her day. For the land shall be desolate, and it will be. And it will be. And one day the church will be desolate. One day I think it's going to be the rapture. I don't think it's going to be, oh, son, go get your wonderful bride. Son, yes, father, bring those children here now. They're going to get a butt with it. Come into my room, children. For the lad to see in church age, the judgment seat of Christ is going to be a butt whipping. And I think I was glad to see in church age when the, when the Lord blows that trump. I think many are going to be scared to find out they're not going. That's scary. 